How are you? You good? You looking good? You feeling good? Uh, it shows. It's good. It's good. Hey, we're together again. Dun, 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 dun. Just praising the Lord. Dun, 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 dun. We're together again. Dun, 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 dun. In one accord. Just feel like something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Dun, 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 dun. Just praising the Lord. Verse 2. There were people in. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, don't, I don't even think there is a verse 2, is there? In Jerusalem. Bam, bam. <laughs> uh, anyways, dearly beloved, we are together again. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to uh, the epistle of 1 Corinthians, um, chapter 1. We're going to be uh, at verse 18, and we're going to be going all the way uh, to chapter 2, um, verse 5. And I've uh, graciously titled this text today, Dumb Men versus the Wisdom of God. So this is going to be good. Um, uh, if you w- weren't watching last Sunday, um, we spoke on dealing with disunity. And um, it, it, interesting, uh, 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 last week we looked at Paul, he says to the believers in Corinth, um, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there would be some, you know, some division among you, you know, uh, as few as possible. Wrong. Uh, no, wrong, wrong. Thanks for stopping me there. Um, he says, I appeal to you that there would be none, no, zero, zero divisions among you, okay? And that you would be united. Just declare it united. Good. Hey, it was Jesus that said, a house divided against itself cannot stand, right? It was Jesus also said, Mark 18, verse 19, I tell you, if any two of you on the earth come into agreement on anything, yes, if any two of you agree on the earth about anything, you'll ask for it, and it'll be done by my Father in heaven. That's the power of agreement. So last week we were looking at this, Paul's like, your division matters. Division matters. And division, it's affecting your testimony. Your division is infecting your te- like, like, here's what I mean. Like, you are, you're professing something. Like, you're professing, Jesus Christ is our Lord. You should follow him. But meanwhile, your hearts are divided. So you are declaring the one who is united within the context of the, of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And they are one. They are in unity. And you are saying, that's my God, the triune union one, that that's my God. And yet you are reflecting a lot of fragmentation. You are reflecting a lot of competition. You are reflecting a lot of weirdo religious weirdness, and but you're saying that's Christianity. Like, Houston, this is a problem. And then he said, like, this is last week. I know I'm preaching last week again, but I had so much fun last week. I'll just preach it again. And then, whatever. Kind of a replay, but not. He says, verse 11, it was reported to me by, by Chloe's people that you guys are not getting along. Like Jerry Seinfeld, what's the deal, right? Like, he says in verse 12, like, like, like some of you say, I follow Paul. Others say, I follow Paulos. I follow uh, 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 Cephas. Some of you are saying, I follow Christ. And so what we have is, 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 is people that are saying that they're worshiping God. And however, the fruit of their life is this, that they are ascribing to the values and philosophies of a lot of dumb men. And it is costing us Greatly. Good thing this has nothing to do with 2020 and believers in the United States of America. Good thing we are radically united. There's no division among us. Good thing we've got this down. All the saints say amen. All the saints say ha ha ha. You know, prophesy, prophesy. And so that's where we were at um, um, last week. And now it, it comes to us. It comes to us, you and I, in, in, in 2020. And, 
um, and there's a battle right now for your, for your attention. There's a battle right now, not just for your attention, because what you give your attention to, you can give your passion to, right? If your passion doesn't have an opportunity for action, your passion will turn into frustration. And when you're, and when you're um, overflowing with frustration, there's only one place you can go. Where is it? To Facebook, Facebook. Facebook, 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 right? Like if your passion doesn't have action, it will tra- it'll turn into frustration. And where does frustration end up? Social media. Praise the Lord. A lot, there's, there's a lot of battles right now. Too many battles. And we're all being invited into battle. Do you feel that? Wave at me. Good, look at all those hands. All right, there's a lot of people, and we're being invited into political battles, racial battles, social battles, religious battles, right? Spiritual battles. And, 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 and what is, there's a lot of men with a lot of philosophies, and they all got the secret knowledge, right? They all got, and, and, and this is what we know, that without Christ, your only power is your knowledge, yeah, without Christ, the only power you got is your knowledge. And so there is this battle for knowledge, for, 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 for secret knowledge. Like, how, how many of you here, you know things that most likely the other fools here don't know? <laughs> like, you, like, <laughs> no one here, they're all online. Like, there are people watching online, that, are, and you're like, oh, I know some things that they don't know because they don't want you to know it, right? Like, like things that really matter, right? Like things that really matter, such as, like most of you don't know, but Elvis is not really dead. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think that Elvis is dead, but no, he's very, very alive, right? Like, and, and, and Elvis isn't, like, here's the thing. They want you to think that Elvis was just a rock singer. He wasn't just a rock singer, was he? No, why? Why? Because he was he was a, rep, a, a, a or he is he's not was he is a rep, a reptilian humanoid that is part of he is at the top he is working with all of the actual elites as a puppet master manipulating all of these things that are taking place like COVID right it's a pandemic um, that was thought of by Elvis Presley and a whole bunch of JFK they are all together right now probably meeting in a pyramid with a couple of aliens right and they have conspired. Like every, like we are victims, you guys, of this. Like, and, and and some of you are laughing. It's because it's because you're not, you haven't, you're not woke yet. And so, and so, like, there's all, all that. Like, and, I'm, and I'm talking, you probably believe that the Earth is round too. Like, like, like all of this, 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 this fight, like this thing for knowledge. And it's not just in the world, you guys. It's also in the church. You know, it's, it's, it's when is the rapture? When is the tribulation? Um, are you pre-trib? Are you post-trib? Right? Some of you are pan-trib. You think this whole thing's just going to pan out in the end? That's because you are a fool. You do not know. You do not know the truth. Right? Like, 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 you know, it, 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 all this, like, like when you look Look at the stuff in the church. When you look at the things that divide us. When you look at like 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 the thing like like the things that that have divided the church into all of these denominations. Where praise God, actually things have gotten a lot better in 2020. Things used to be very 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 divided. You know, like 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 you can't even be saved if you haven't been water baptized, or like you're not really a Christian if you don't speak in tongues. Like like we don't. So my grandpa used to say, um, repent and be Baptist for all have sinned and fallen short of the assemblies of God. All, 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 like we, we know things like we are part of the apostolic reformation we know things that other people we know like the dynamics of the kingdom and the kingdom realms and engaging with the order of Melchizedek and if you're not engaging with that you're just religious. You know, and like, and, and so we there, 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 we see these these divisions in the truth between who's 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 right and who's who and who's part of the remnant, and then who's just who's just another blah, you know, generic Christian. Good thing I'm on the inside. Good thing. Good thing I'm at the good church. Good thing I'm on the right team. 
And we see these behaviors, and we see these postures, and Paul's going to deal with it. It was happening in Corinth. It's happening today in the USA. It's happening today in the good old USA. And we see here that Paul says, hey, Corinth, hey, United States of America, hey, Seattle Revival Center, if you're going to be a part of what God is doing, you're going to have to shed your human perspective. Why? Because human perspective is dumb. It's, you say, Darren, you're, you're, you're overusing the word dumb today, and it seems disrespectful. Paul would, Paul's about to use the word foolish. Foolish means dumb. Foolish means lacking common sense. Foolish means, hey, that don't make sense. And what we're going to see is that Paul says, most of you have been wrong, and most of you have been, been, been fighting, and most of you have been doing all, 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 all of these things, and, 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 and this is what we're going to say, that Paul is going to deal with it head on, because that's what we have to do in the church, that in love, that was week one, Paul's like, hey, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to have to talk about some stuff. It's going to be really close to home. It's going to be pretty offensive. But right off the bat, I love you. You're special. You are very special. I love you. You're so great. But because I love you, I'm going to have to spank you. And this hurts me more than it hurts you. You know, and if you're like, if you're like my son... He's like, no, like, like, I, like that, the hardest part about spanking my son, not that I believe in that, is I have to actually catch him. <laughs> one day I was chasing him and I was like, wait a sec, I'm supposed to be the one in charge here. I stopped, I said, I will not chase you. We can do this the easy, uh, enough about my parenting. So anyways, Paul, Paul says here, hey, I love you, but we're going to have to deal with some stuff. There is division amongst you. And the problem with division, hey, wrong culture, division. That's the culture of hell, not the culture of heaven. When you go to heaven, it's like, like where do you live? Oh, I live near Glory Falls. <laughs> We don't talk to the people at Glory Falls. <laughs> like, no, when you go to heaven, you're going to hear 24-7, we are family, Ooh, brothers and sisters, are we? When you go to hell, it's going to be like, ah, oh, we don't talk to them. Why? They live over in Charcoal Alley. <laughs> like, hell is the culture of separation, segregation, and division. The culture of heaven is a culture of, of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. What frequency? are you partnering with this morning just say the frequency of heaven the frequency of heaven I'll talk about myself um, but I like to do that um, so just recently like I was battle ready Ah, oh, I was battle ready. Like, like we had a, a, an investigation from the Department of Health um, from King County, and 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 they were they were they were playing not very nice, and and people and they were doing some things that that weren't very nice. And how do you know when you're doing something that's not very nice? You don't put it in writing. You do it on the phone, because then there's no record or accountability. And so, anyways, there's some things being said that w that weren't very nice. So, uh, so we got battle ready. And we were just like, and what's so cool about SRC is I, I let you guys know what was going on. And SRC went total karate kid. Like Seattle Bible Center, uh, the whole body responding back to me by emails. They were just like, oh, we going swamp pose. <laughs> like SRC was just like, oh, <laughs> Oh, this is about to go down, right? Like SRC was just like, like people are emailing me like, oh, I got your back. We had people that were not, that had COVID. They were just like, like, <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, whatever. But, but they were ready to start doing some martial arts. They're like, I don't have any energy, but I'll, I'll kick some butt for you, pass it down. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, it was like the whole body. I never got one negative email from one person in our church. The whole church was just like, we ready to fight. Bring it, bring it, bring it. And I was like, I'm ready to fight. In fact, um, uh, we, had, we had contact with uh, Sean Foyt's PR team, um, already uh, thinking and dreaming through all of our um, uh, press releases. Like when we heard that we had done nothing illegal and that all they had 
had on us was to go to the court of public opinion. I didn't want to go to court. I don't like court. That is not my scene. I've seen pastors get really old in court. I don't want to get old this year. I got old enough this year. So like, I don't want to go to court. But, but if they want to go to the news, hey, we've already done that four times. Let's do it again, right? So, like, so we're, we're, we're ready. Like, bring it, bring it, bring it. And then all of a sudden, um, one morning I wake up, I got a text message from Bobby Connor, and he says, now get ready. I'm getting ready for a fight. And Bobby says, I see an erasing. All of a sudden, I have a, <laughs> he, he's like, Bobby, don't take my fight from me. You know, all of a sudden, I, <laughs> I, I have a phone conversation with our investigator and her supervisor. Her supervisor um, interrupts the investigator says, hey, actually, I'm going to talk today. And, uh, and, she talk, and she apologized to me verbally and then sent me something in writing, also apologizing and giving us their blessing for our reopening this morning. Sometimes we get so, so battle ready, so battle ready, and God's like, hey, but uh, remember me? I mean, we can do it that way, waste a bunch of time, maybe get your butt kicked, come back with a black eye and a bloody nose, oh, but you should see them. <laughs> yeah. Or we can do it God's way. All right, enough about me. Let's read. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Pause. Now, think about this for a second. Think about this. We're talking about division. We're talking about a rebuke, and then this is what Paul's saying. Hey, in light of all that division, competition, fragmentation, uh, nobody get along, Paul brings up something abstract and from somewhat out of nowhere. What does he bring up? The cross. He brings up the cross and he says, hey, let me remind you that the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That there is a power to approach this topic, but you won't get there outside of the cross. Hey, Christian, 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 remember, remember Christ? Yo, American believer, in 2020, hey, hey, Trump, yeah, that's great, Biden debate, yeah, excited, well, I don't know what that was, but well, where are we on? Remember Christ. Remember what he did. Remember it is the cross. And to us, Paul, Paul he says, for to us who are being saved, to us who are being um, redeemed to us who are still kind of getting set apart, to us who haven't yet arrived. It is this cross, this Christ that is transforming us day to day in glory to glory. Paul says, don't forget the cross because it is the cross that reframes our understanding of wisdom, success, and power. It is the cross that looks nothing like worldly wisdom. The cross looks nothing like worldly success. The cross looks like failure. The cross looks like surrender. The cross looks like weakness. The Hebrews were at war. That Jesus was supposed to be the great eschatological conqueror and savior, but instead of coming in, in oh, what would Jesus do? He's about to kick a Roman butt or two. Instead of kicking Roman hiney can, what does he do? He multiplies fish and chips. And they're like, okay, that's nice. Like, I was hungry, and, and now, uh, now we got some fish and chips. Like, that's cool. But Jesus, at what point are you going to snap and kill all the Romans? This is what they needed. They needed liberation. They needed the, the governmental thing was jacked. And they have all of these prophetic words of a redeemer. And here comes the redeemer. What does he want to do? He wants to walk on water. And we see here, um, uh, uh, Paul says, I need to remind you of the great failure. I need to remind you of the one who came in weakness. I need to re remind you of, of, of the one, like, 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 like today in 2020, we, all, we, we want to go all, all 10 kinds of Peter and, and pull out Roman swords and cut off Roman's ears with their own swords. Quack! 
And then what does Jesus do? He healed his enemy's ear. And then he rebuked Peter for operating in secular justice because Peter did not understand. Peter did not understand the dynamics of the kingdom. He did not understand that that kingdom wisdom looks nothing like secular wisdom. That it contrasts greatly and there is no similarity between worldly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. They are not friends. They do not hold hands at the park. That worldly wisdom is, 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 has nothing. They are opposites. There is no union between heavenly wisdom and worldly wisdom. They are radically different. And if we are, are worshiping man, we are going to miss the moves of the Spirit. Why? Because it will not, because he will not respect our preferences as to how he comes, who he comes to, what he does when he comes. If you want to know a move of God, it always looks like Jesus. The ones that think they know have no clue. The ones who think that they, that they understand will be the very ones that always try to crucify the Christ. All right, and it says verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the man who is wise? Where is your scribe? Where is the debater of this age? God, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It Please God through the folly of what we preach to those who believe. For Jews demanded, give us signs. And Greeks said, give us some wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, the stumbling block to the Jew and folly to the Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jew and Greek. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God for the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is what he says. All worldly wisdom failed in its attempts to recognize God. God got by all of the world and religion surveillance cameras. They thought they, Herod thought they were going to catch him. And, and the Pharisees thought they would know when he arrives. And, 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 and Paul's like, hey, to the, to the, where's your scholars? Where's your debaters? Where are those that think that they are so wise? Your worldly, your worldly ones missed it. Herod, Herod couldn't get close to him and your religious ones missed it they killed him he says verse 26 consider your calling brothers not many of you were wise according to worldly standards not many were powerful not many of you were from noble birth but God chose what is foolish and dumb in the world to shame the wise God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised. God chose the things that could be made fun of, even things that are not, to bring to nothing those that are. So that no human being could have the opportunity to boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let no one boast, but boast in the Lord. This is what what Paul says. All y'all missed it. Oh, you think you get to boast? Nope, you missed it. Who thinks they got it? No, you're wrong. You're lying. You missed it. All y'all missed it. You don't get to boast in nothing except for he in his grace included you in on that slight little bit of revelation. That Holy Spirit took that little bit of revelation and said, yeah, that's Jesus. You need him. 
I don't get to boast that I'm a pastor. I don't get to boast that I'm a Christian. I don't get to say, hey, look what I've done. I've really cleaned myself up. No, no, no. It is by his grace. It is by his kindness. It is by his mercy. So when you find yourself pointing your finger and judging and getting a little pharisaical, put that finger away. Why? You got three more pointing right back at you. Paul's saying, hey, let's deal with division. Let's talk about this. Let's deal with that competition. Let's deal with that fragmentation. Let's deal with denominations. Let's deal with religious pride. How do we do that? Let's talk about the cross. Let's talk about the one that hung on the cross. They said, the king is coming. The king is coming. Well, kings are born in palaces. Not this one. He was born in a barn. Hey, king, the king is coming. The king is, oh, he will, uh, kings, they fortify themselves and they protect themselves in castles. Not this one. This one left his heavenly castle and descended into the earth and became his own creation, becoming a man. And among men, he lived uh, from a little baby and then came through adolescence and he, he went through and faced the tempter and temptation and he lived and he died and he resurrected and he ascended as a man, as a human being that we who, who, who were the, like the embodiment of human fracturedness and, and injustice and unholiness that he who knew no sin became all of our sin so that we could become all of his righteousness. He cloaked himself in foolishness. This is, this is the methodology of the kingdom. This is the strategy of the kingdom that people said um, in the midst of this injustice and persecution against the Jews, here is one who did not fight, but he surrendered himself and he gave his life as a ransom. They were expecting a great judgment and a great justice and in the place he became the great judgment. He became the great sacrifice for all of humanity. And in the final moments before he died, he said these words, hanging as a, as a, as a high king. Kings don't hang from crosses. Kings do not allow, they do not give themselves to be stripped naked in shame. There's only one king that would do this sort of thing. For the very ones who were crucifying him, our high king, our high priest, hung from a cross and prayed for us and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And cloaked in foolishness, what looked like radical defeat became the triumph for the human race. Because in the kingdom, everything's upside down. In the kingdom, what's down is up. In the kingdom, the last shall be first. That's what cracks me up, you know. Not you guys, but sometimes people come to SRC and they're looking for greatness. Yeah, and they start schmoozing and, and they start doing stuff and they start positioning themselves. Why? Because the spirit of Jezebel doesn't have the revelation that to be great in the kingdom of God you have to first be a servant. If you ever want to expose a Jezebel, just try to get them to clean a the toilet. They'll scream like a demon, go find the next church where they can find a leader that's foolish enough to be impressed by their accurate prophetic gift. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Your accuracy means nothing to me. If you don't have a servant's heart, you don't look nothing like my Savior. That he came lowly, he came meek, he came as the epitome of the opposite of anything awesome and never elevated himself more highly than he ought. He, the servant king in his brokenness, laid it all down. And Paul would say, yo, Christian, you've forgotten your Christ. Now you worship man. You've taken on your rabbi's offenses and you have fragmented up into a series of tribes all underneath the banner of the Father's love. You are radica radically deceived. Get back on point. Get back on message. The dumb men that you serve are fools. 
He says there in the last verse that we read there, because of him, you are in Christ, who became to us the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is not knowledge. The wisdom of God are not ideals. The wisdom of God is not revelation of hidden ideas. The wisdom of God is Christ Jesus. He is wisdom. Do you have them this morning? If you have Christ Jesus, all you need is obedience to activate your destiny. How many of you have ever said, once I know more, I'll do more for the Lord? Wave at me. No, no, no. You don't need to know more. In fact, the more you know, the more things are going to get in your way to handicap you from being obedient. If I know more, I'll do more. You know what you're saying? Jesus, you're not enough. Jesus, you're not enough. Now, if you've been equipped for years in a certain kind of area, you can bet that most likely God's not going to give you a radical divine opportunity in that area. Why? Because your ministry manual is your savior. Jesus has no desire for you to have an intimate relationship with some sort of ministry manual or handbook. He wants to be your savior. He wants for you to have, you know, evangelism is more for you than it is for the person getting saved. That everything that God created gives. And what's evangelism? It's one of the most gracious acts of generosity that we could ever, ever give. The, the most incredible thing that you could ever, ever give is a revelation of Jesus to somebody that doesn't have it. So you, if I had more money, I could do more things from the Lord. You are, you are, you are, you, you don't understand. You, un, you don't understand this king, this king of glory. What people need is not your money. In fact, if you had a bunch of money and you started blessing people, it might do more damage than good. For some people, debt keeps them healthier than riches. Why? Because freedom's not about the ability to be able to make decisions based off of what you have. Freedom is internal, and it's that place where you know who you are, whose you are, where you are, so that when the Lord entrusts you little, you can be faithful with it, and it can be multiplied exponentially and supernaturally so that you can be entrusted with divine, with divine riches, wealth, and wisdom because all of these things go together. God's doing a good thing in you. It says here, let's go chapter two. Is it good? And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not... Come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words. Can you even imagine this? I want you to think about the most, this the most eloquent or articulator of the gospel in the Bible, the Apostle Paul in Corinth said, when I was with you, I was a stuttering Stanley. My words hardly made sense. This is what he said. I didn't have eloquent words. I didn't even give myself to that, but I came in a demonstration of the spirit of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is what Paul says. Hey, you know how you guys are looking to Apollos and Apollos and Cephas, and you guys all got your, your token rabbis and, and philosophers? This is what Paul says. Hey, Corinth, I will not do a ministry performance in order to feed your addiction to knowledge. Your addiction to knowledge is not going to drive what I do in ministry. When I came to you, I came with simplicity. I claim to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. It was not my amazing ideals that converted you. What was it? It was a raw demonstration of the spirit of power, the spirit of Christ Jesus. He's like, when I was with you, honestly, kind of freaking out a little bit. When I was with you, I was like, yay, this is going to be a lot of work. But this is what he says. I'm being honest with you right now. 
I want to be honest with you right now about what I felt like, what I was going through, and what I did. Why? Because I am pleading with you to untether yourself from the functional lordship of carnal wisdom so that you can rest, so you can rest in the practical, wonderful, faithful power of Christ. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's not what you know. It's who you know. And if you know him, then then what you know is not going to keep you from the body of Christ. What you know is not going to divide you from others. This is what this is what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to he's trying to get us just so battle he's trying to get us obsessed with a bunch of crap that doesn't matter. He's trying to get us obsessed with something that matters today, but you won't even think about it this time next year. I'll tell you what's at stake. Eternity is at stake. That every time we gather, that every time we worship, there's an opportunity for there to be ripples that go out into eternity. And so I have determined this platform, is, this temple, it's not going to be transformed into a Trump rally. Why? Because there's going to be a day when Trump isn't even alive anymore, but this temple will still be here. There's going to be a time when earthly kings come and go, live and die, and issues change, but the message of Christ Jesus is a message that lasts forever. And I don't know what's taking place, but I know that we cannot compromise this message of hope, this message of salvation. This is what I know, that there's more at stake this year than an election. There's a fight for your stinking identity. We're being lied to right now. We're being told, stay home, stay safe. That's great, unless you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you need to go and live dangerously. That's what, like, 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 this way, like, like, this, like, just follow me here for a second. First century, BC, like, like AD, let's go there, first century, Christianity. Follow Jesus, you will die. Don't follow Jesus, you will live. This is what Jesus said. Follow me, now go and die. This is what Jesus said. If you follow me, it'll cost you stinking everything. It'll cost you your friends, your family, your job, Don't follow me. Everything will stay the same. Follow me. You will die. There's only one, out of all the apostles, there's only one apostle where there's no record of his death. The rest of them died painful, tragic. Listen, you want to be safe? You want to be comfortable? Don't be a Christian. Wrong religion. Become a Buddhist. All you have, Buddhists, all you have to do is, 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 is sit in like some sort of Zen posture, clear your mind of everything, put on a little soundtrack with waves, and, and, and then let that religion try to enhance your life. It's going to make me better. It's going to make me better. It's going to um, um, You are special. I am special. You're going to make it. I'm going to make it. Ah. Or you can follow Jesus. What does that look like? You have no idea. Why? He's not going to tell you. I have a friend. He was sitting in his car in Hollywood. He was in a a big Hollywood movie. And he was sitting there in the car, and the Lord gave him a vision of his future. The Lord showed him all the movies that he would be in. Big movies. He, He had already worked with an Academy Award director. He sat there in his car. He, he, he saw his future. And the Lord said, that can be yours if you just want to do your thing. If you want to follow your desire, you can have all of that. And then he said, okay, what does it look like if I follow you? And God showed him nothing. And he chose to follow Jesus. 
I pray he's watching right now. Because I want to remind you that was your choice. You chose to follow Jesus. We won't get to come back here again. We won't get to do this year again. We won't get to undo our mistakes. The choices we make now. The values that we establish. It will define the trajectory of not just your life, but the generations that follow. And we're going to make a lot of mistakes. And that's okay. Because God never seems to be too impressed by our perfection. And we'll have to apologize lots. I find myself apologizing lots. But man, it's, it's my desire as I know it's yours. That we wouldn't be known for a big church, like honestly, like Darren into my life, like having a church of like 10 or 20,000 in Seattle, like that, that doesn't turn me on. It really doesn't. Like, if, like just to have some sort of massive church at the end of my life and to, to call that success, that doesn't, that doesn't get me going at, at, at stinking all, at all. The, what, what gets me going? Knowing that I was a part of a movement, knowing that I was connected to one of the fastest growing families on earth, knowing that my heart was, was tethered with believers in, in Africa and all throughout Europe and, and all throughout the East Coast, and knowing that I, I didn't just, that I didn't just run alone, knowing that Sea Revival Center didn't just run alone, knowing that we connected to what Holy Spirit was doing on the earth, we stunk and we, we ran hard. We were stinking driven. We did everything that we could as a movement to make Jesus famous. We did everything that we could and we knew that that was going to mean that we did it together. And we ran with people that didn't look like us. We ran with people that didn't talk like us. We ran with people that didn't agree with us. And we did whatever we could to partner with what Holy Spirit is doing. And, and I'm telling you, there's stuff happening right now that I can't get into right now. But the Lord is setting things up, even for us here at Seattle Revival Center, where we are going to be part of such. Listen, I love local churches, but God has not called us to be a local church. He has called us to be a revival center, an apostolic hub, something that's connected out into a net that actually works, called a network. If the net doesn't work, Cast your nets on the other side. Yeah, but there's big holes in it. God's like, I can't fill your net. There's big holes in it. Listen, if this is your desire to see his kingdom come, his will be done, not through Darren, but through you, through your contribution, through your giftings, through your thoughts, through your ideas, through your testimony, through your fa failures, all this. If this is your desire to be a part of this, then partner with Seattle Revival Center. Partner with the Holy Spirit. Stop saying things like Darren at your church and say, this is my church, and if Darren wasn't here, it'd still be my church. That God has called me here. And then, and then start looking at your friends and your family start, 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 and start inviting them into what you're up to. Because, I, man, I pray that you're up to something. I pray that this is your year that you get awakened to your identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. Uh, you'll be sitting at the Thanksgiving table in November. He'll be looking at you saying, uh, Jessica, you look different. What's going on? You're like, oh, I'm up to some stuff. I can't really get into it right now. <laughs> no, what's up? What's up? No, I'm, I'm into something. It's crazy. It's worldwide. I can't really get into it right now. <laughs> no, what's up? What's up, Jessica? What's up? No, no, no. You might not be ready for this. No, tell me what's going on. Put the mashed potatoes down. <laughs> You don't want this. It'll cost you everything. You don't want this. It'll cost, it, it ain't safe. You don't want this. You have to do things that you're not good enough to do. You don't want this. He'll have you do things you're not qualified to do. You don't want this. You might have to talk to kings. You don't want this. You might have to kill a giant. You don't need Darren. 
You don't need this building. You need Jesus. Because if you're with Jesus, no matter what church you go to, you'll just, t- you'll just take, you'll take on your next assignment. No matter what believers you're with, Darren, crappy Savior, Jesus, everything. 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 You don't need an e-course. You need to say yes to Jesus this morning. You don't need a book study. You don't need a YouTube channel. You need to say yes to Jesus. You don't need breathing techniques. You need Jesus. You need the breath. You need the Ruach himself. Let it matter. Let it bother you. Let your, let your passion translate into action so you don't become like the masses who are stuck in frustration because they never found a righteous rabbi that would give them an opportunity to execute justice on the earth. Let's stand. How many of you, you're okay with actually being a disruptor? Wave at me. How many of you, like, you're okay with showing up to a funeral and ruining it? How many of you, 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 could, you, you could really care less what America says as a Christian. You just want to look like him. Wave at me this morning. You just want to look. You just want to look. How many of you, you're okay with being cloaked in foolishness? Wrapped in a brown mantle of humility. Overlooked. Rejected. Scorned. Mocked. How many of you, you don't care? You just want to look like him. I'll tell you, what we've seen in the past, it's not going to duplicate itself. Why? Because there are no Xerox machines in heaven. America doesn't need another Zuzu Street. Azusa. America needs cities and nations that are burning with the uncompromising fire of God. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know when it shows up, every religious bone in my body is going to want to reject it. Why? Because it won't be cute. It won't be tame. It won't work with my box. And we're going to need each other. We're going to have to be accountable to each other. We're going to have to remember that you love me. (laughs) I'm going to have to remember that I love you. We're going to have to sing a lot of Barney together. (laughs) Knowing that we're modeling something, knowing that's not about the home run, but it's about doing it right. So that when it comes time for Andrea and I to hand the baton over to our children, they're already so far ahead of us that like, like we've been modeling something for them. There's going to come a time when this is a east side campus and there's actually a revival center downtown Seattle where the manifest glory presence of the Lord is filling Pike Street going all the way down to the market. There's going to come a time when there's a gateway, a literal portal that opens up at the gateway of the city at King Street Station where believers are going to be singing and worshiping Jesus. There's going to come a time when Seattle's not known as whatever it's known for right now, but it's known as a city of hope. There's going to come a time when these things are realities because if your prayers, because of your generosity, because of your investment, and because people like my grandma Rose who would pray and pray and pray, and people like my mom that would pray and pray and pray that there is going to come a time when we're going to reap a harvest of souls. There's going to come a time when we reap a harvest of righteousness. There's going to come a time when, 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 when you won't have the barns for the harvest. I am declaring there's going to come a time. Why? Because generations have been running before us, praying and interceding for such a time as this. And I'm telling you, what we need is not more glory. We need more revelation that the King of glory has been seated inside of us and that the glory of the Lord is already covering the earth. It's already covering the waters, but the Lord is looking for a generation. The eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro for a people that will say yes. 
You can wrap me in your cloak of foolishness. I don't care if I am the reproach. I don't care if I am the laughing stock at some denominational assembly or conference. You can make fun of me if it means that the gospel is going to be advanced, if it means that Jesus is going to be seen. I could care less what human respects me. I want to be right in the center of God's redemptive plan and purpose for my life. Just go ahead and put up your hands in a surrender posture and just say, Jesus, I surrender my wisdom, my intelligence, and by faith, I tether my spirit with the spirit of wisdom. From this day forward, I declare I am not confused. I declare I have the mind of Christ. I declare I am not afraid. I declare my king of glory is residing in me. I declare I will not make the same mistakes as my father or father's father. I will not allow the failures of the past to affect my present or my future. I declare I'm a man of forgiveness. I declare I am a woman of excellence. I declare he has called me for such a time as this. I declare I'm not too old. I declare I'm not too young. I got to tell you a quick story. Put your hands down real quick. I heard an interview. I don't know if you guys heard this. With Mike, with Mike Tyson. The guy's training right now to fight. The people that are watching him are so excited because Tyson is training with that same energy, with the same quickness as, his, as youthful Tyson. The, 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 all the fight guys are like, I cannot believe how quick he is. Like, they are so excited, because this isn't just like some old timer, you know, like, I'm going to make a comeback. No, no, no. They're like, this Tyson is like, he is so sharp. He is so quick. We've never seen him so focused. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the retired fighters are getting back in the ring. And, he, and, he, and this is what he said. He said, the young are going to marvel at how fierce, how quick, and just how on point they are. So how many know that in the kingdom, you don't retire, you refire? So I just declare over you I, that you're, you're, you're going to get your speed back. You're going to get your agility back. You're going to get your jump back. You're going to get your energy back. Listen, everyone here or online that got that demonic COVID virus, you know that with that, there's an attack on your heart, an attack on your lungs, an attack on your energy, an attack on your soul. There's actually a demonic component that comes against your identity, that comes against your prophecies. There's a very demonic uh, component, right? So if, that, if that's you, I just declare right now the blood of Jesus over the top of your head down to the soles of your feet that no residing, residual, reoccurring um, uh, things with this demonic COVID virus can reoccur. And I just declare right now a restoration even to taste and if you haven't gotten that back, I declare a restoration over your taste and a restoration of energy. And I declare a, 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 a tenfold increase of your natural energy and supernatural energy in Jesus' name. And, and, and I even see that when your grandkids see you or your kids see you, they're going to say, what happened to you? You're so quick. You're so sharp. And so what the enemy meant for evil is going to, the enemy is going to pay. The enemy is going to pay. The enemy is going to pay. I'm telling you, he, ah, he, he, he messed with the wrong church. He messed with the wrong church. We're not just going to survive this year. We're going to go out punching him in his teeth. We're, we're going to go out just shattering the face of these principalities. I declare you're about to get your fight back. You're about to get your voice back. You're about to get your influence back. Zoma, when you were when you were talking this this morning, I, I saw I saw I saw you like I, I just saw lots and lots and lots of Spanish people. I, I and I saw you preaching. And I just I, there's a there's just there's a preaching anointing on you, there's a fire on you, but and, and and it's like you've just had a teaspoon. It's like you haven't even it's all you have is a Costco sample, honey. 
just, just, just put out your hands. Just, just stretch out your hand. I declare a fire to preach on you. Zola, I declare a fire to preach on you. You know what? The enemy, the enemy messed with the wrong family. The enemy messed with the wrong family. And I just declare, I declare a, 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 a revival in the span. I declare a, a special, just Latina fire on you. Not just to preach, but to prophesy. I see miracles coming from you, Zoma. I see you walking in miracles, but I see an anointing on your whole family. I see an anointing on your family. I just declare the enemy mess with the wrong family. Lord, Lord, would you allow just a fresh fire to come on her right now? Just a fresh baptism of fire right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Fresh fire right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I, I know she's a burning one. I just see her like a human torch. Just like a human torch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, last but not least, I know I've kept you along, but it's been a long time since I've talked to you in person. I feel like we have a lot of catching up to do. But real quick, pray for us this next week. We're sending a team to Spokane to go do three nights of revival. And so we're going to be just going after it. We've got a, 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 an invitation Last week, he said, when do you want us to come? He said, right now. He said, my church is hungry. We just want to go after it. I said, okay, so how far out? He goes, no, I'm serious. You can come right now. I said, I can't come right now. How about next week? He said, okay. That same day, I got a call from a pastor in Redmond, Oregon, Pastor Joshua. He said, we want, you to, uh, we want you to come. I said, can I bring a team? Because my people are just, they're anxious to start doing this stuff. He said, <laughs> Yep, you can bring a team. So we're bringing a team to do uh, three days of revival in Redmond, Oregon. Listen, all these guys were saying, you don't pay for it, we're going to pay for it. Sierra Bible Center, we got funds, we're going to take care of ourselves. You don't invest in us, we're going to invest in your region. So be praying. If you know people in Spokane, tell them to look up Access Church, doc, uh, Access Church online. Just Google it. If you want to meet us there, we'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll put you to work. Okay. Also, this is really cool. Uh, I'm taking a team to Moravian Falls uh, here in just a couple weeks. So we literally got teams going like every week. And um, uh, uh, we're taking a team. Uh, just found out that some saints in our church paid for all of our, our plane tickets. So $1,400 worth of plane tickets for zero. <laughs> and this is our commitment as a church. COVID... <laughs> That's been a, just a bummer of a deal this year. The protests, the anarchy, just been a bummer of a deal. This is our community church. We're going to do everything we can to see this year redeemed by the name of Jesus. We're going to do everything we can to go after revival, to go after the glory of the Lord. We're going to do everything that we can to say that we believe that now is the stinking time. There's no more separation between heaven and earth. Jesus is right here. Jesus is heaven. And we're going to go after it. Just look at the person next to you and say, we're going after it. You're going after it. You're going after it. If, good. If you need prayer for anything, don't feel like you have to leave. Come on up. Put your toes on the invisible line. We will pray for you. Um, otherwise, be praying for our team this week. I will see you next Sunday. We're going to tell a bunch of crazy Jesus glory stories. We're going to party hard. Get here early. You're gonna need to. It's gonna be hard to find a seat. And um, until then, God bless you. You are loved. Peace out.